All right, it is my honor and privilege to welcome Ice Cube into Thank the you. zone, man. This Thank is, you, man. I've interviewed a lot of great people here, but it's, uh, I'm truly honored to have you here, man. Well, it's great to be here, you know, let's talk some basketball. All right, let's do it. Let's, well, before we get to basketball, though, I heard, I, I know somebody that went to high school with you, mm -hmm. played football, and he said you were a really good football player, running back. He yeah. said you made like all league as a freshman. In yeah, high yeah. Uh, I played fullback. Uh, you know, I play outside linebacker too. And yeah, you know, try to do my thing. I thought you know that was the direction I was gonna go in. You know, until I start hanging really with Dr. Dre a lot. Okay. And then from there, I, I said I want to get into music, so I just quit the team. So stopped you stopped playing. playing. Well, I, I just didn't play the next year. I played okay. the full season but just didn't play the next year. It was like, you know, be up at the school playing football all day or, or go hang when it's time to hang mm -hmm. and, and try to, you know, dibble and dabble in music. And I wanted to, I wanted to pursue music. Okay. So, you know, I quit the team. Who, who'd you run like, running back? Who, who would you compare yourself to? Man, you know, fullback, you blocking most of the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, I didn't really think about that. You know, I just thought about when they gave it to me, just get as many yards as I, can, I could. I used to pl like playing defense the most. Okay. You know, uh, outside linebacker. I, I used to like to hit people more than getting hit. Yeah, hit. What, what kind of basketball player were you? Did you play on the basketball team or anything? I tried out for the team, but I think the, uh, the coach was hating on me because, cause, you know, by playing football, you're always late to everything, basketball. So, <laughs> but, um, you know, just try to play point guard. Um, and, you know, I used to love to play basketball. And, you know, once again, realize, yo, this is not my calling. Uh, I need to go uh, do something that I'm really um, good at and that I got a shot at. And so, you know, I stopped playing and switched to, to music. So you want to talk, let's talk a little bit of basketball. Um, NBA Finals, Golden State, Cleveland. Yeah. Who you, it looks like Cleveland's in trouble. What you think? Well, they was always in trouble, and not not about how they, they got play. one great player. Yeah, That's not about mean. like the player skill. I think each player they have has certain skills that can work, but they just haven't been together long enough to win a championship. You know, okay. and when you think about it, they shouldn't win because when you just throw a team together like that, how could you win a championship? How could we trust the? you know, the process, so mm -hmm, to speak, mm -hmm. um, when when you just throwing teams together and you can go win a championship. So, you know, Golden State should win because they have a better, more cohesive team. Uh, so, you know, if the game lord is correct, that yeah, team should know. win. How many games you got? You know, maybe 4-1. Four, 4-1, one. Four, that's what I'm you thinking. Know. I know you're a Laker fan. So I assume you want LeBron here next year. Is that? Yeah, I mean, if that's the piece that's going to move us forward. You know, we LeBron, I don't think LeBron gets us to the championship, you know, not in the West. What about LeBron and Paul George? Because that's, I, I don't think he'd come by himself. I think it'd be LeBron and Paul George. I mean, who, who would turn that down? Um, I think, you know, that could work. I'm still not sure what kind of, what kind of, player as far as cerebral player that that Paul George is you know uh -huh. is he but you'd have LeBron for that yeah maybe. you know yeah. so that may work unless Paul is hiding his ego we don't really mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. and then it don't work when because some people just don't want to take a back seat to nobody yeah um that's how Kobe was so you never know you know um LeBron and Clay you know I think I think that oh, you dynamic. Are, you are. I, I'd rather have Clay. I Who just wouldn't? I think he's gonna stay in Golden State though. Yeah, I mean, it depends. You know, it's like this. In Golden State, he's cruise control. You know what I mean? He can kind yep. of, you know, be, you know, do whatever he needs to do each night. You know, he don't have to carry no load. Mm -hmm. uh, but his numbers are suffering, and you know he's gonna want another contract sooner or later. He, so yeah. is that going to bother him to the point where he say, look, I got three rings. Might as well cash out now and go somewhere and get them numbers and I can cash out again. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I think the Lakers is a great spot. I 
think he knows the organization. I, I don't know why, you know, I'm gonna, I need to call Mitch Kupchak and say, what, what's up, man? <laughs> how, did, how did he slip through your fingers, man? What's up? I know he was around the facility. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shooting a couple yeah. jumpers that, dad, Michael Thompson, you know, it's like, yeah. I know Michael said, hey, man, peep out my son. <laughs> what happened? You know, uh, so I got some issues with why we don't have Clay time. So you a big Clay? I, that's your pitch to Clay. I get it. Now, if if Magic called you and said, "Look, we want you to come and talk to LeBron. He's thinking about Philadelphia. He's thinking about Houston. Mm. We want him here. We want you to sell him on the Lakers." What would you say? Nope. <laughs> okay. that, ain't, that ain't my job, Magic. <laughs> Do your job, baby. So you ain't got no sales pitch to LeBron. No, because. Whether, I don't want to have nothing to do with whether he comes or not. You know, I don't want people to be like, damn, Q. You couldn't deliver. What's <laughs> up, man? What you say to him? You know, I want, I'd rather for Magic to do his job. He's getting paid the big bucks. And I sit back and be a fan, stay a fan. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy with the leadership. So whatever decision they make is probably a decision they have to make for whatever reason, and all right, you know, all right, all right. I'll be more upset if they get rid of Randall. I mean, I love Really? Yeah, I love It'll Jimmy be Smith. interesting to see if they can keep him. He's a walking double-double. Yeah. yeah, yeah, on a bad team, though. Let's see well, if Well, I think he could play like that on a good team. I think he's really learning he what he can do on the court, yeah. and that when he's, when he's going, nobody want to guard him. So I heard you on Undisputed earlier say you got MJ over LeBron in the GOAT conversation, which yeah. I, I'm with you on that. I want that. to kill the GOAT, but, but let's go. <laughs> I mean, I want to kill that GOAT conversation. Oh, you do? Yeah, because, I mean, okay, greatest of ahead. all times is just silly. It is. Oh, so you don't even like having the conversation. Nah, because we haven't seen all time. All time is a long time. So we don't know what's coming down the pipe. And... To call somebody the greatest of all time is just insulting to the unborn hoopsters in the world who could turn out greater than all of them. Okay, okay. So you don't have any GOAT in your mind? There's no GOAT? There's no GOAT. There's just, you know, kings of eras. Okay, you know? okay. So, it's you similar know, it's to like rapping, you, right? In a way, it, yeah. it's hard to pick the. I mean, nobody. There is no goat rapper. Everybody got their own opinions. Yeah, yeah. And how, you know, can the goat be the goat if he's a student and he, he learned from, from a teacher? Mm -hmm. You know, LeBron wouldn't know how to play like that without Jordan. But we yeah. people like me need something to do though. So we. That's cool. Talking. It's cool. <laughs> I mean, talking about which talking player about. I would rather have on my team, you know, without a question, it's Michael Jordan. And it's all between the ears. You know, it's cool to be born with those great gifts and mm -hmm. then go out there and display your God-given talent. But it's another thing to have to reach down inside and use whatever talent God gave you to conquer. It's, it's just a different mentality, um, and that's why I get an edge to Jordan. Now, that's interesting you say that because I think LeBron is second best of all time to Jordan. But most ex-players I talk to, they always like, why ain't Kobe in the conversation? Yeah. You know, because we just make it Jordan, LeBron. You a Lakers fan, Are you, do you have Kobe? Would you rather Kobe than LeBron? Yes. Okay. So yeah. tell me, same same, same reason. kind of thing. Yeah. Same reason. You know, um, it's all between the years, um, and you know, I just feel like to me, Kobe and LeBron are two different players. You know, mm -hmm. you know, um, LeBron is, you know, um, a great, you know, teammate, so to speak. You know what I mean? But you know. Uh, Kobe's like an assassin, you know, he's like w Would you compare man Kobe, in the black hat. would he be more gangster rap than LeBron? If you had to put it in hip hop genres? Um, Cause he got attitude that wise, I yeah, think, yeah. yeah. Attitude wise, yeah, but 
and LeBron could get gangster. He had bully ball. <laughs> you know, he, he's he he can do bully ball. Um, Kobe can take your heart. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. um, so, yeah. I want to get to a little some of your story too, but first I want to hit you with a little rapid fire question. All right. All right. Your favorite rapper, obviously, other uh, than yourself. Um. Between Chuck D and Melly Mel. Melly Mel, okay, yeah. going way back. Yeah, because they, they, they are trendsetters and they um, change the trajectory of the music with their music. Um, so, you know, everybody was hip hop, hippity, hippity, hip, hip hop, mm -hmm. and throw your hands in the air, wave them like they just don't care. To Melly Mel came, it was like a child was born with no state yeah, of mind, yeah, blind yeah, to the ways yeah. of mankind. So that changed the trajectory of rap. So so did Chuck D, you know, showing that it wasn't all about um, us as individuals, but all about us as a union. Mm -hmm. So those are my two favorite rappers. Do you, who you think changed it on the West Coast? I remember the first West Coast rapper I think I remember was Egyptian Lover. You know, uh, um, yeah, he was a uh, Egyptian lover. You got the L.A. Dream Team. You got a uh, world class wrecking crew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Ice T. You know, Ice T. Ice T. Seems like he changed. Is the you know the you know pioneer, Pied Piper of what we call gangster rap. Okay. He's the to me the first one that that you know gave it a form. Even though it was hard records done by you know you can't. You know, Schoolie D mm -hmm. and, and Public Enemy, I mean, not Public Enemy, but Karras One with yeah. uh, Criminal Minded. You know, so it's been, you know, if you if you change the game, you got to be one of the best to me. I was going to ask you about the, the gangster, the way NWA changed it. Obviously, you guys are viewed as the pioneers of gangster rap. And mm -hmm. you mentioned some of the ones that, you know, they had some songs here and there that were like that. But... You guys just went straight, you know, y'all took it to another level. Mm -hmm. What what made you guys do that? Um, and, you know, at that time, I mean, you wasn't getting airplay because of it and stuff like yeah. that. What made y'all go that hard when we really hadn't seen anybody do it consistently like that? Um, we just felt like that was our path. We we didn't We didn't think that we would ever get radio play or that you know, a group like ours would ever hit the national stage. So we just started doing records that we felt were working in our neighborhood. And that's, that was our path. That's what we felt. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Uh, favorite rap group other than NWA? I guess would it be Public Enemy? You mentioned Chuck uh, It would be Run DMC. Okay. Because they, they showed us how to be pros. Um, I mean, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five is there, and Public Enemy is there, but Run DMC really took it and made it, I think, worldwide music. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a favorite uh, rap song other than One Young? Um, I'll probably say The Message or, uh, you know, Rebel Without a Pause or Fight the Power, one okay. of those songs. What's your favorite Ice Cube song? Um, I don't really have a favorite one. You know, I never, you know, I never like, think, I think about them as my kids, so, you know, they all got their own <laughs> place in my heart. Uh -huh. But I don't have a favorite. Do you have a favorite R&B group? Um, Guess it would be, you know, between um, the Isley Brothers, um, Parliament Funkadelic, which that's funk, mm -hmm. and then maybe um, Jacksons. You okay. Know. Okay. Favorite movie. Wow. Um, my favorite movie um, is Jaws. 
Really? Yeah, it's my favorite movie. Wow. You were young when that came out, too. Yeah, I was. You know, it's just, to me, a movie that is, it's, it's the reason why you go to the movies. It's, it's, <laughs> it's perfect on, on all levels. Storytelling, um, you know, fear, adventure. Um, yeah, I think it's a perfect movie. Favorite sports movie of all time? Um, wow, favorite sports movie of all time. Um, wow, you know, I just saw a few movies, you know, recently that were great. I wouldn't call them my favorite of all time. Uh, it's hard to, to say, uh, but um, Draft Day was great. Okay. Moneyball was a great movie. Um, but no, you know, I go back to movies like All the Right Moves, that which was, is, yeah, that was a, good which is a great yeah. uh, movie. Tom Cruise did it years ago. Um, you know, it's been a few great ones. All right, favorite Laker of all time? Magic Johnson. Okay, okay. Favorite food? Um, I guess steak. I guess that's what I get most excited to eat. <laughs> Favorite sneaker? Um, Chuck Taylor's. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You got a ton of those? <laughs> I got so many pairs of Chuck Taylor's. It's crazy. <laughs> yep. Uh, better actor, you or your son? <laughs> uh, it seems like he's better. <laughs> yeah, it seems like he's better. You know, he, he, um, you know, he, he's gotten off to a great start, so. Did you, when you, because my girl, I got girls now, they're 20, twins. But they grew up, you know, we took them to see Are We There Yet and, and all those movies, um, mm -hmm. the football movie. Yeah, yeah. Long, uh, I can't remember It was that. Long Shots. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they remember you, they know you from that. And I'm always like, man, this was one of the hardest rappers. <laughs> like, he wasn't yeah. the innovators of gangster rap. Yeah. So when you s started doing those types of family friendly movies, did you ever think, sit down and say, you know what, okay, this doesn't fit my image. Could, how could this affect my image in hip hop or anything like that? Or what was that process like if there was any to it? Um, I don't really care about no image. You know what I mean? I just be myself. And I figured, you know, my fans who have been down with me for years got kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't I don't want them saying, that's Ice Cube. He he's a rapper. He he, you know, trying to tell them who I am. Mm -hmm. I'd rather do something and they know who I am. So that's when I decided movies like, you know, it started off really with barbershop. You know, that was my first like PG-13 comedy that wasn't really full of like R-rated mm -hmm. uh, content. So I was like, yo, can we push it to PG? That's why I did Are We There Yet, uh, Long Shots. You know, these are movies that I think, you know, kids can get into, you know, instead of maybe the Friday movies, you know what I mean, which are for kind of for older mm -hmm. uh, fans. So. It was just a calculated decision to make sure that I stay relevant in, in the same households as I was relevant uh, before. Okay. And by connecting with, with the youth in those households. And, you know, at some point, I'm going to say, my fans got grandkids and, and I'm going to do another one. You know what I mean? So it's really, that's really what it's all about. Now, you also doing, of course, the owner of the Big Three, creator of the Big Three. Mm -hmm. Of all the retired players ever, if they all could play, who would your ideal big three team be? Oh, man, I would go with, I mean, Magic, Kareem, and Jordan. I don't think you can yeah, beat that team. Yeah, that's a pretty good team. That. <laughs> that's pretty simple. <laughs> yeah. Um, in five, five years from now, where would you like to see the big three? Um, i like to see it as... I would like to see people looking forward to our season like they look forward to the NBA mm -hmm. coming or the NFL. I would like people to be like, man, here we go with Big Three basketball. So I would like to get the fan base up and, and get people excited. I would like for us to be you know, on the world stage. We're trying to create 
you know, on the under, you know, a, a World Cup of three on three basketball. So we're, you know, we go to China this this month, and uh, we're so trying to start Big Three teams, China. Or? No, we're trying to start a Big Three China. Oh wow! Start Big Three. Just pe players from China. Yeah. Okay. Well, Asia, China. Try to get players a league going there, where maybe their champion is good enough to come play in our summer league here. Same with Brazil, same with other countries. Just make this a worldwide oh, thing because, nice. you know, three on three is in the Olympics. Everybody gonna have to step up their game. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, big three, you know, is the standard for professional three on three basketball. Uh, you know, FIBA got their thing going, but, you know, their, theirs to me is a more amateur game. This here is a more professional version, so we think people can, can really um, cut their teeth in our league yeah, and get ready cool. for the Olympics. Do you ever think about a big three league in America? You know, just regular dudes that didn't play in the NBA? Have you thought about that? Well, you know, we, we're always looking to see, you know, the, the, the natural progression of the league. And, you know, it could get to that point where we're just saying, yo, you can ball, come ball, so you, you know, to, yeah. um, but we're not there yet. You know, we're still trying to turn people on to the sport and what it can be. And so, you know, we, we feel like this formula is the best formula for now, but you never know. Now, T.O. last year, Terrell Owens, yeah. he wanted to play. Um, any thought to let nine, M you know, like other pros that weren't in the NBA, NFL, baseball, anything like that? Nah. You know, I promise the guys that they'll play with their peers. You know, not saying that T.O. can't play yeah. in the big three. I don't know. You know, I would have to see him, you know, really go up against this kind of this competition, you know, going this at this level. So I don't know. But, but, but you know, I promise the guys that they'll play against their peers. I think um, we have to be careful to not look like a gimmick. Mm -hmm. But look like yeah. uh, actual pro league, and you know these guys are getting paid. They're not playing for free, mm -hmm. so it's really all about maintaining the integrity of the league and making sure that three on three basketball grows in a healthy manner and it doesn't turn into you know some sideshow stuff. That's good. That's smart. A uh, couple quick questions about your, your rapping. I read on the internet you started rapping. You wrote your first rap in typing class. Yeah, is that, yeah, that's how yeah. it started. Typing, you know, I was one <laughs> so of those typewriters. <laughs> you know, it, it wasn't even electric. Um, yeah, you know, we would get these assignments to do, and I started to actually be able to type pretty fast. You know, so I would finish fast and be just sitting there. And um, one of my homies named Kiddo was like, we was talking about, he was actually talking about LL New record okay because we was trying to get a hold of it because we heard it was going around on bootleg was that radio no yeah. it was a uh, bigger and deafer okay he kept saying he knew somebody had it i didn't believe him because back then you know bootleg stuff yeah, wasn't yeah. wasn't just everywhere when it came to music so anyway it was like we just got off he said you ever write a rap before i was like nah i never i never wrote, wrote a rap or even tried to rap he said, you write one and I'll write one. We'll see which one's the best. Wow. And I just started, like, typing out a rap. So you hadn't thought about rap, even though you were big into hip-hop, I guess. I was you a hadn't fan. Thought about I was rapping. just a fan. I just thought we were going to be, you know, the Wrecking Crew were DJs. So you were down group. with them already before yeah. you started writing rap? Okay. Yeah, I was I was uh, real cool with, with, uh, with Dre. You know, I wouldn't say down. They weren't yeah. letting us hang with them, but mm -hmm. but we were cool. But they were just DJs, so I thought that was the extent because all I saw was DJ crews like yeah. Uncle Jam's Army, which Egyptian Lover came mm. from, was a DJ crew. Wrecking Crew was a DJ crew, so I felt like you know we can be fans and play the music, but okay. none of us was really good enough to do it. Wow, wow. So who came up with the name NWA? Uh, I want to give the credit to Easy, but it's between Easy and Dre because they they just came to pick me up one day and they had that name like <laughs> like they had been talking about it yeah. all day. Uh, so 
they just told me the initials, and I was like, this is the dumbest name I ever heard of. <laughs> you know, just initials, NWA, what does that mean? And when they told me what it mean, I was like, oh, okay. That's dope. I like that. And so I was with it. But not at first. I was like, that's that's just letters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was doing that as much back then. Uh, so when you left, you know, then, you know, they went at you and you, you came back with no Vaseline. Last time you were here, you told me that you wrote that. Or I don't know if you wrote it, but you on a fishing trip or you well, were fishing, you decided to do it. Well, the 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 owner of the label, one of the owners had kept telling me he wanted to take me on, on take me on his boat. And, you know, I was ducking him, ducking him, ducking him. And he just was like, yo, you can't duck me no more. We got to go out. I got I got something to tell you. So we went out on the boat, you know, we're fishing. I'm really like bored, like <laughs> ready to go anyway. But I'm entertaining it and he's like, man, I wanna play your record. Off the new NWA record. So he played it. So I was hot. I was mad. I'm ready to go now. So And you at that point though, you thinking y'all you didn't have any beef with them at that point. Well I didn't right? diss them on America's most wanted, yeah. so I felt like you know, there's no reason for them to diss me. Yeah. It was a business decision. So when they did, I felt like, oh, okay, they, they taking it there. And that's when I, I really just waited for the trip to be over. But when I got home, I like wrote it in like 90 minutes. Really? Yeah. And then just went to the studio? And, and I held it for a minute. I was just trying to figure out what's the perfect track. Yeah. And when I when I found the perfect track, I was like, yo. I mean, that's one of the best, maybe the best diss record of all time, mm -hmm. you know? Um, uh, so you you um, you dealt with a lot of police brutality in your lyrics, mm -hmm. you know, at NWA, with NWA and after that. And to see it's still happening, obviously. Um, do, what do you, you, we've seen town halls with, you know, athletes and the president and you know police commissioners and all that what do you think needs to be done to just end this i mean it's it's that's 20 years ago you were writing about it and it's still going on i think it's got to be a lot of retraining going on i think um i think police should should have to do mandatory psycho evaluation um it should be mandatory. It shouldn't be if I got a problem, I got to go talk to somebody. It's like, no, mm -hmm. you scheduled to talk to somebody every <laughs> Wednesday at this time yeah. about what's going on. And it should be off the record. So it's not going to go in your file. It's not going to go in this. It's just somebody to talk to, somebody to, to, let you, to, to help you dissect all this stuff that's going on with you. Um, you know, those type of things need to happen. But, you know, the police changing the way they do things is not going to happen because their objectives are different than our objectives. Mm -hmm. Our objectives is civil rights. Our objectives is treat people fair. Their objective is make it home tonight. Mm -hmm. Period. Yep. Win and make it home tonight. So it's two different objectives going on here. So they're trained to win. Confrontation, situation, make it home tonight. And sometimes rights, sometimes uh, humanity um, gets in the way of that. You Do know? you understand? I mean, because you're right. I mean, they, they in any moment, I guess they could lose their life. Um, do you understand the I guess the tension there, because like you said, there's there's tension because both people, both sides got different different objectives. I understand the tension, but I don't understand the bullying. I don't understand um, a, a a dude going to church, kill nine people, yeah. and nobody's beating his ass on the way out. They actually protecting him, putting him in you know, bulletproof vests and, mm -hmm. but 
a kid mouthing off at the mall, y'all want to choke him out and beat him down. Kid going to their prime, he gets choked out. I mean, it's enough real suspects yeah, yeah. out there. It's enough people doing bad. If you, you know, it's like, that's the part I don't understand. It's the bullying, which goes beyond, you know, these are situations where you know your life is not in danger mm -hmm. and you still ramping it up. So it, it, it just becomes simple, good old American bullying. Do they ever, like, have police commissioners or the police in general ever ask your opinion because of your history dealing with this, you know, lyrically and stuff? Like, you know, because that's, I think that's a I, I great think, idea that I really haven't heard from many people. I think, you know, I don't, I don't know if they care about my opinion. You know, I think they, you know, they have to change um, the way they look at the public and um, and understand the job that they that they've chosen under oath to to accept. Nobody's forcing you to be a police cop. Yeah. If you don't want to deal with this stuff, you shouldn't deal with it. But if you decide to, you got to take them all the the restraint of. Uh, that that the job entails because you're supposed to serve the public not prey on the public what's your feeling on the kaepernick the way he's dealt with it and obviously the repercussions that he suffered because of it um you know i felt you know I've, of course i feel for kaepernick and you know i always felt that there was never a good outcome to this because you're taking a knee because of something that has to do with the outside world. You're taking a knee on the football field with something that has to do with the outside world that the people that control this game can't fix that. Mm. So what's the end game? What, what was ever the end game to that? So it was always going to be a place where it never in it was never a solution yeah to yeah. that problem so i always felt like you know bringing awareness to the situation is cool um falling on your falling on the sword or being a martyr for the situation i don't know if that solves the problem or mm -hmm. gets us any closer to solving the problem so that's why i feel for him you know because he's in that situation. Last thing before you go, I know we gotta wrap up. What's one thing about Ice Cube that would surprise people? People don't know. Um, I don't know, you know, cause I, I, don't, I don't really know everybody's perception of me, but you know, I think, you know, what you see is what you get. Um, and I try to be the same exact person I was before this music and before all this, you know. Um, I don't know if that's surprising, but, you know, it's, it's, it's who I am. Man, I appreciate it, brother. All right, no Great problem, Great stuff. Man. And, no uh, Thank you for everything, man. You know, letting me come on here and do this. Nah, this was pumping, good. This was good. You, pumping you, the big three in any kind of way. You oh, know, yeah. You we we looking forward to the big three. And I know that I've been talking to the players. They they all into it now. Yeah, they ready. My man Olden Polonese was on. He had one of our best podcasts, and he he got cut. But well, I heard he was killing the big men. Well, he came out there. <laughs> I wouldn't say killing it. <laughs> he came out there, you know, and um, we gave him a shot. You know what I'm saying? And what was cool is the players pick who they want to play with. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs>